Are carbs the enemy? The truth about glycemic index and diabetes. Good day, everyone. Today we are going to talk about one of the most important concepts in nutrition, the glycemic index. We all know that carbohydrates are an essential macronutrient in our diet, providing us with energy to fuel our bodies. But have you ever wondered how different types of carbohydrates affect our blood sugar levels? This is where the glycemic index comes in. The glycemic index GI, is a ranking system that measures how quickly carbohydrates in food raise blood sugar levels compared to glucose, which has a GI of 100. It takes into account both the type and quantity of carbohydrate in a food, and is expressed as a percentage or a number between 0 and 100. The higher the GI value of a food, the faster it raises blood sugar levels. Now, you might be wondering how we calculate the glycemic index of a food. The GI value of a food is determined by feeding a group of people a measured portion of the food containing 50 grams of carbohydrate, and then measuring their blood sugar levels over the next two hours. The area under the blood sugar curve is then compared to the area under the curve for the same amount of carbohydrate in glucose, which gives the food its GI value. So, what are some examples of foods with high and low glycemic index values? High GI foods include white bread, white rice, sugary drinks, and most processed foods. On the other hand, low GI foods include whole grains, vegetables, fruits, and legumes. Some examples of glycemic indices GI, for various natural and processed foods. Natural foods. 1. Sweet potato, GI of 44. 2. Apple, GI of 39. 3. Banana, GI of 62. 4. Carrots, GI of 41. 5. Chickpeas, GI of 28. 6. Quinoa, GI of 53. 7. Blueberries, GI of 53. 8. Oatmeal, GI of 58. Processed foods. 1. White bread, GI of 70. 2. Cornflakes, GI of 93. 3. Pretzels, GI of 83. 4. Rice cakes, GI of 82. 5. Donuts, GI of 76. 6. Candy bars, GI of 65 to 80, depending on the type. 7. Soft drinks, GI of 59 to 76, depending on the type. It's worth noting that the GI of foods can vary depending on a number of factors, including how they are prepared and consumed, and the presence of other foods or nutrients in a meal. Additionally, foods with a high GI aren't necessarily bad, and those with a low GI aren't necessarily good. It's all about balance and moderation in the context of a healthy diet. But why is the glycemic index important, you might ask? Well, for people with diabetes, managing blood sugar levels is crucial. Eating a diet high in low GI foods can help control blood sugar levels and reduce the risk of complications associated with diabetes, such as heart disease, kidney damage, and nerve damage. Additionally, research has shown that low GI diets may also help with weight loss, improving insulin sensitivity, and reducing the risk of certain types of cancer. Let's look at some examples of how the glycemic index can be used in managing diabetes. For breakfast, instead of having a bowl of sugary cereal with white bread toast, try having a bowl of oatmeal with berries and nuts. This will provide a slower and steadier release of glucose into the bloodstream, helping to keep blood sugar levels stable throughout the morning. For lunch, instead of having a sandwich on white bread with chips, try having a salad with grilled chicken and quinoa. This will provide a lower GI meal that will help to prevent a spike in blood sugar levels. In conclusion, the glycemic index is an important tool in understanding how different carbohydrates affect our blood sugar levels. By choosing foods with a lower GI value, we can help manage and control our blood sugar levels, reduce the risk of complications associated with diabetes, and improve overall health. So next time you're making food choices, remember to consider the glycemic index and opt for whole, unprocessed foods whenever possible. Thanks for watching.